Devils are awake. What are you reading, Dadima? Today is Shivaratri, and I am reading the stories of Lord Shiva. Stories! I love stories! Yes, yes, I want to hear it! Please, Dadima, please! And then can we have the pakoras? Yes, my dear. There were story stories. Okay, I will tell you a story. But promise me, after that, you're going to brush your teeth and take your bath. Yes! Now, let me see. Hmm, where do I begin? Maybe the one where Shiva becomes a hunter? I want to be a hunter. Your sister? Okay. That's my hunter story. What is a hunter, Dadima? A hunter hunts wild animals in the forest. Do you know who Arjuna was? And the Pandavas? Yes, I know. I know, I know, I know. Arjuna, Yudhishthira, Bheem. He doesn't know anything. Yudhishthira, Bheem, Arjun, Nakul and Sahadev. <laughs> okay, my little devils. Now, let me tell you the story. Shiva, a principal deity of Hinduism. Often called the destroyer or the transformer. Is one of the Trimurti along with Brahma, the creator, and Vishnu, the preserver. He is the embodiment of renunciation, mercy, love, and wisdom. Though often mentioned as the destroyer, in reality, he is the regenerator. Mount Kailash in the great Himalayas is his abode. I will now tell you one of the many stories of Lord Shiva. The five Pandavas were in exile, having lost their kingdom in a game of dice to their cousins, Kauravas. In order to win back the kingdom, the sage Ved Vyasa asked one of the Pandavas, Arjuna, a master archer, to acquire the celestial weapon from Shiva by pleasing him through penance and meditation. Arjuna left for the Himalayas in quest of Lord Shiva to meditate on the banks of the Bhagirathi River as advised by the sage Ved Vyasa. He meditated on Lord Shiva for days and months, without food or water, chanting the great Vedic mantra. At Kailash, on hearing Arjuna's intense prayers, 
देवी पार्वती से आस्ट लॉर्ड शिव प्रभु what does arjuna want he wants the celestial weapon devi is he worthy of it we will soon find out devi back down arjuna was disturbed from his deep meditation from the noise around him he opened his eyes and looked around he saw a wild boar charging fiercely at him without wasting time Arjuna raised his bow and shot an arrow. His arrow hit the wild boar right in the front. Just then, another arrow also hit the rear of the boar. Arjuna looked around in wonder as to where the second arrow came from. It's mine. He that killed to me. <laughs> it was my arrow that hit the boar first. Ah. Uh, how could you say that? You had shot the arrow after I had shot it. How dare you claim my kill? You will not be spared for this. <laughs> All kill belongs to me. You foolish man. You deserve to die to my arrows. Be ready to face the great archer Arjuna. All right, young man. Shoot as you please. I fear nothing. A fight ensued between Arjuna and the hunter. Arrows were shot from both ends with equal valor. And then an arrow from the hunter broke the string of Arjuna's bow. Arjuna threw his bow away and charged at the hunter with his bare hands. They wrestled each other. Arjuna struggled hard to match the power of the hunter. But finally, the hunter lifted Arjuna with both his hands, swirled him around, and threw him down. Physically hurt and filled with despair, Arjuna got up. and created a shivling with mud and worshiped lord shiva with garlands and flowers he looked at the hunter and saw the garland around his neck arjuna realized that the hunter was none other than lord shiva and the huntress his wife devi parvati Arjuna fell at the feet of the Lord and begged his pardon for his pride and arrogance. And then the Lord said, "I have already forgiven you. That wild boar was none other than the demon Mukasura, who had been sent by your cousin Duryodhana the Kaurava to disturb your meditation. Your penance, devotion, and courage." Have pleased me, and therefore I bestow upon you my sacred and most powerful weapon, the Pashupatastra, which will help you in the hour of need. And with time, Shiva's divine prophecy came true. It was with this Pashupatastra that Archana won the famous Kurukshetra war against the Kauravas. as is mentioned in the famous epic the mahabharata
what's happening here? Dadima, he's a sea monster and he kicked little Ducky. No, no, Dadima, it wasn't me. Hmm, how did they manage you in school? I'll never know. <laughs> but I love you both, naughty monsters. Now, let's take a bath. And if you be good, I will tell you the story of Jalandara. The monster from the sea. Uh, and sea monster Jalandala. <laughs> it's Jalandala. Isn't it, Daddy? <laughs> it's Jalandhara. Now, stay still and listen to the story. Once sat before Brahma, the creator, boasting of their powers. I can burn the mighty ocean with my flames. I can blow away the mountains with my gales. I can crush all the demons with my weapon, Vajra. Brahma was dismayed by the arrogance of his sons. Soon you will all learn that there is a far greater power than any god in this place. Suddenly, there appeared a Yaksha who held a blade of grass in his hand. Yakshas are semi-divine beings, half god and a half demon. All of you boast of your superior powers over nature. Can I ask any one of you to make this blade of grass disappear? What makes what you makes think you that think this, that grass this grass wouldn't your wouldn't my fury? Agni spat fire. He hissed and crackled. It found to his astonishment that the blade of grass did not burn at all. Millions of blades of grass are carried under my breath. Vayu huffed and buffed and generated a blizzard. But the blade of grass refused to budge. Nothing in this cosmic world can resist my Vajra. Indra swung his Vajra and hurled his thunderbolt. But the blade of grass remained just as it was. How dare you humiliate the sons of Brahma? What is the meaning of all this? It means that you are being taught a lesson. Beyond every great power, there is one greater, none other than Lord Shiva. Without realizing this, you are beneath a simple blade of grass. Yaksha disappeared and there was silence. Agni and Vayu, humbled by the events, hung their heads in shame. But Indra was not amused. So, this Shiva thinks he can send some messenger and can humiliate me, the king of gods. It's time to teach him a lesson. Indra grabbed his Vajra and moved to Kailash for the contest of power. Where is Shiva? I am Shiva. You have the impertinence to teach me, the king of gods, a lesson? Answer me or I will strike you down with my Vajra. Shiva silence enraged Indra. He raised his Vajra to strike him. Shiva, in anger, opened his third eye. Brahma realized what was about to happen and cried for mercy. But, but please don't please kill don't Indra. Kill Indra. He is the leader of gods. Without him, the balance of the cosmos will be lost. Okay, I will spare him. But soon, your son will meet his match and his pride will be crushed. 
he will find the humility to learn from his mistakes. driven out of the heavens. Indra ran to Brahma for help. I have never known humiliation such as this. How can I defeat Jalandhara? You cannot. You, cannot. you must seek you must the help of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. Will Shiva help someone who insulted him? Shiva, Shiva bears no grudge. Indra, on Brahma's advice, challenged Jalandhara to defeat Shiva. Who is this Shiva? How dare he fight me? <laughs> Jalandhara laughed and rushed to Kailash. Are you Shiva, the self-proclaimed warrior? Who can all be defeated? defeated? Fight me Fight and prove your worth! Shiva marked a circle on the ground with his big toe. I'll fight only if you can carry this piece of the Shiva. Yes, I can! Shiva. Jalandhara ripped out the ground marked by Shiva and placed it on his head. Jalandhara boasted. See, see, I can I do, it. do it. Suddenly, the circular piece of earth on Jalandhara's head began to whirl like a discus and started to grow in size. Before he could say a word, it became so big and spun so violently that it cracked his skull and broke his spine. As Jalandhara gasped for his last breath, he heard Shiva say, I carry the moon on my head and you cannot even carry a small piece of earth. Whatever made you think that you are the strongest in cosmos? Perhaps a little too much pride. Nobody is a match for Shiva, the cosmic destroyer. Nothing transcends him, and he shall remain eternal. Shiva. Shiva will protect you from all troubles. But Daddy, can Shiva make me really strong? <laughs> Shiva will not give you any muscles, Bitta. For that, you have to exercise. But he will surely help you when you are in need.
Daddy Ma, why does fire burn everything? I'm really afraid of fire. Chitti, no need to be afraid. Fire is the purifier. But we should not play with it. Have you heard of Pasmasura? No, Daddy. Is he also a demon? Mm, well, not really. But his touch could turn things into ash, just like fire does. Ooh, is he like Lord Shiva? No, Bita. He is an Asura. But through his penance and worship, he got the boon from Lord Shiva. Could he kill Shiva too? Yes, but then how can you kill Shiva? It just cannot happen. But, but... And then what happened, Dadima? Okay, I'll tell you the whole story. Then you'll understand. For hundreds of years, a strange hermit would stand in painful stances, imitating the Lord of the Dance, chanting his name. have moved me, dear hermit. To you, my selfless devotee, I grant a boon. Lord Shiva, all I wish is that I may continue to devote myself to your service. But as I stand in each position, the ashes blow away with the wind. Consider it done. The touch of your index finger will burn anything, anyone, be it God or demon into ash. Noting the hermit's peculiar behavior, Shiva decided to keep an eye on him secretly. Very strange. Why would you hunt with this power? You cannot eat ash. I, I just wanted to test your gift. I protect the creatures of the earth. How dare you misuse this wound? So, you will strike me down? It is against protocol to destroy a devotee who has just been given a boon. Really? Did you not hear me? Stop this senseless killing. I thought you hermits respect nature. <laughs> you are so easy to fool. 
Suddenly, the hermit revealed his true form. A demon? Much more than a demon with this boon. I am Pasmasura. I can turn anyone, including a god, into ash. Shiva allowed Pasmasura to chase him, just to stop him from picking on innocent creatures. Vishnu Dev, I need your help. I see you have been tricked. Trickery is not one of my strong points. But you, I remember when you took the form of Mohini, you could trick any demon into anything. Yes, I remember. Excellent idea. Stand aside and watch. the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. How do you like to be my queen? I am about to conquer the gods with my powerful touch. I'm not impressed by power. My true maid must be a master of dance. Then you have found your true mate. I am a master of dance. And once I touch Shiva, I will be the lord of dance. I hear you boasting, but I don't see you dancing. Can you do this? Very impressive, but not difficult for me. How about this? Easy. Can you do this? 
Asura did the same. The moment he touched his own hair, he turned into ash. That was brilliant. Vishnudev, where did you learn to dance like that? By watching you, of course. <laughs> With arrogance and pride, even great power never lasts for long. That's Devi Saraswati. And that? And that is Vishnu. And that? Hmm, that's Goddess Lakshmi. And who is that, Dalima? That's Lord Ram and Devi Sita. Have you heard the story of Ramayana? The story of Ram, the prince of Ayodhya. Yes, yes, I know. Sita, Hanuman, Ravan. I saw them in a storybook at school. I know Ravan. He has ten heads and he's so scary. <laughs> but do you know how Ravan tried to lift the huge Mount Kailash? Where Lord Shiva and Parvati lived? No, Daddy, please tell me. Tell me too. Okay. Now, this is how it all happened. Long, long ago, the island kingdom of Lanka, dominated by the dreaded Rakshasas, was ruled by the powerful king. Ravana. Ravana was known for his faithful devotion to Lord Shiva. He would visit the Himalayas and be there for many days at a time. His chief advisor was worried about these frequent visits. Ravana, my lord, I ask your permission to speak my mind. Yes, hurry up, my Levan. All this frequent traveling to the Himalayas interferes with your kingly duties. If you don't find a way to balance your devotion and duty, Lanka will fall. I do this for Lanka. With Shiva's boom, I can defeat any god or demon who dares to threaten my kingdom. Boarding the legendary Pushpaka Vimana, Ravana set out on his journey to the Himalayas. For a Rakshasa, it could be a little more difficult to gain Shiva's attention. Lord Shiva requires stronger austerities from me. Om Namah Shiva. 
Stop this at once. What do you want from me? Firstly, I ask that you restore all my nine heads. Done. Also, as your most pious devotee, I ask that I have a boon. The strength of a hundred gods. So be it. Every day I'll praise you until the end of time. <laughs> I have the power! Ravana is becoming too powerful and may try to dominate us. He must be stopped. Narada, you have a musical charm no one can resist. How shall I use this charm, Devraj? Coax his arrogance a little bit. this for Lord Shiva. You worship right here every day, but Lanka suffers when you're away. That is none of your business. If you had the strength, you could carry him home. But no one could carry Mount Kailas alone. I can. I have the strength of a hundred gods. Sit beside my palace. <laughs> Suddenly, Mount Kalash seemed much lighter. Lord Shiva, I, uh, Lord Shiva, I, you, you. Shiva trapped Ravana under the great mountain, and Ravana's strength was not enough to pull himself out. Fortunately, your boon allows you to survive the weight of a mountain, but not the pain. Release me! Release me! Help! Help! Ah! Ravana cried for tears. Out of his tears was formed the famous saltwater lake, Rakshastal. I don't think he's enjoying his boon now. <laughs> he certainly cries like a hundred gods. I have offended my lord. I will meditate on the godly music of Narada to compose a song in praise of you.
new melody, inspired by my own song. One song will save Shiva and Parvati were so enchanted by the music, they forgot why they had imprisoned the Rakshasa. I am content to stay here forever if it pleases you, my lord. You have shown humility and sincere devotion. You may return to your kingdom and take me with you in the form of a Shivalinga. his devotion and duty. But will he ever be able to tame his arrogance? Toy, isn't it? I will give you a doll. Hmm? No, I want to play with the water gun. He promised, and 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 I gave him lots of pagodas. Is it so, dear? Oh, don't cry, don't cry. I will ask him. Hmm? Kutu, Kutu, Daddy wants to see you. Come here. Come here, beta. Did you promise to give her your water gun if she gave you pakoras? Yes, yes, but not now. I'll give it tomorrow. That's not good, Kutu. You made a promise and you should keep it. Give the water gun to her, beta. Yay! I have the gun! <laughs> but I want it back tomorrow. Kutu, you are her big brother. You should not make her cry. Hmm, okay. Do you know, once Ganesha and Kartikya also had a big quarrel. You want to hear the story? Who is Kartikya? I know Ganesha. They were the children of Lord Shiva. Why did they quarrel? Even in the family of gods, there comes a time when the question of marriage must be raised. And so it was at the house of Shiva. You both have grown to be the most impressive boys. Strong, intelligent, virtuous and handsome. You have made us proud. Now it's time for your real lives to begin. We want to celebrate your marriage. But we cannot decide who should be married first. Since I was born from the hands of our mother Devi, it seems fair that I be married first. What? I am the eldest son and I was born of our father's essence. Of course, it should be me first. You are both equally worthy. There is no simple answer to this question. 
I will make this much simpler. I think the contest is in order. Tell me what to do, father. I am prepared for any battle. If it's your wish that I compete with my brother, I am also ready. This is a time in your life in which you must face the world. Unless you know your world, you cannot lead your wife to prosperity. Both of you must travel around the world. The first one to return will be married. Hmm, interesting concept. When do we start? I am starting now. Our father has given the command. With great determination, Kartik here flew around the world. Along the way, he faced terrible storms. much more difficult than I thought. Where is my brother? I hope he is okay. Meanwhile, Ganesha was off to a slow start. Son, aren't you interested in winning? Of course, I am, father. I am quite serious about this race. Then, I suggest you get started. Yes, you are right. Mushika, please come. Kanisha fastened a tiny harness around Mushika, his mouse. Now, take me around the world. You're hardly moving at all. I don't think we should interfere. Let Ganesha and Kartikeya do things in their own ways. their journey, Kartikya allowed his peacock some time to rest. You'll feel much better after this. Protecting his faithful peacock, Kartikya took on a pack of hungry beasts. Ganesha hasn't caught up with us. Almost home, Kartikya realized that there was no sign of his brother Ganesha. I think we are going to win. My marriage awaits. What are you doing here? Surely, you could not have traveled that quickly. Well, 
Mushika worked very hard in pulling me around the world. Kartikeya, he never left the cave. Then I have done it. I have arrived first. When is my marriage to take place? I am so sorry to say, dear brother, that you will be celebrating my marriage. I arrived first. No, I did. I did. No, I did. I was here first. Plain and simple. How dare you say that? You've done nothing. Not true. I traveled all around mother and father. I traveled around the world. Ah, so have I. Because mother and father is my whole world. No. Who could argue with that? I don't believe this. Kartikeya, please relax. You have both won in your own ways. Kartikeya, you have won from your single-minded determination and endurance. Ganesha, you have won by a balance of heart and mind, love and intellect. Whoever worships Kartikeya will gain strength. Whoever worships Ganesha will gain wisdom. These are the two aspects of my power, my Shakti. How about a flight together? Okay, let's do it. Our boys are growing up. Ganesha transformed his mouse into a giant rodent and flew off into the sky with Kartikeya flying beside him. Whether taking the simple or the difficult path, two greatly determined gods achieved the same end through sincerity of action and devotion to their parents. Just a little bit, just a little bit. 
Nah, 